hello everyone welcome to my channel this video is about vibration measurement our first topic is forced or harmonically excited vibration there is a picture here you can see the indicator k c m and f naught sine omega t Look at the governing equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f naught sine omega t and give this equation 1. The solution is x of t is equal to xc of t plus xp of t. xc of t gives free vibration and stops after some times. It is a transient solution. It is important at the start of the motion. So, x of t is equal to xp of t as xc of t is 0 after some times. Let us find xp of t from equation 1. Put xp of t is equal to x sine omega t minus phi in equation 1. Phi is the phase angle between f naught and x minus m omega square x sine omega t minus phi plus c omega x cos omega t minus phi plus kx sine omega t minus phi is equal to f naught sine omega t. Or we can write um, omega square x sine omega t minus phi plus pi plus c omega x cos omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 plus kx sine omega t minus phi is equal to f naught sine omega t. We can write m omega square sine omega t minus phi plus pi plus c omega x cos omega t minus phi plus pi by 2 plus kx sine omega t minus phi is equal to f naught sine omega t. Here spring force is equal to kx look at the figure damping force is equal to c omega x Inertia force is equal to m omega square x and the applied force is equal to f naught and the angle is phi. So the phase diagram is like that. From the phase diagram we can write f naught square is equal to c omega x whole square plus kx minus m omega square x whole square or we can write kx divided by f naught is equal to 1 by root over 1 minus omega divided by omega n whole square second bracket whole square plus 2 salon omega divided by omega n whole square or we can write kx divided by f naught is equal to 1 by root over 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square. And look at the figure. The x axis is resonance and in the x y axis is indicated kx divided by f naught. Here x is equal to infinity at beta is equal to 1 and if epsilon is equal to 0. So damping is essential. There is a figure where angle phi is equal to 90 degree. We can write 10 phi is equal to c omega x divided by kx minus m omega square x is equal to 12 epsilon beta divided by 1 minus beta square case 1 if beta is very small we can write kx divided by f naught is equal to 1 because phi is equal to 0 case 2 if beta is equal to 1 
then 5 is equal to pi by 2. Case 3, if beta is too large, then pi is greater than pi by 2. And look at the figure. Here angle phi is greater than 90 degree. That means pi by 2. Our next topic is mechanical impedance force or vector diagram. The governing equation is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f naught sine omega 2 and give it equation 1. Then we can write x double dot plus 2 epsilon omega n x dot plus omega n square x is equal to f naught divided by m sine omega 2 and give it equation 2. So the solution of equation 1 and 2 x of t is equal to f naught divided by k multiply sine omega t minus phi divided by root over 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square plus x1 e to the power minus epsilon omega n t sine root over 1 minus epsilon square omega n t plus phi 1. This is the steady state solution in the first part before x1 e and the next part starting from x1 e to the power minus and this is called transient solution and there is a figure from this we can write this solution the solution of equation 1 and 2 is x of t is equal to f naught divided by k multiply sine omega t minus phi divided by root over 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square. The first one is steady state solution and now they start the transient solution plus x1 e to the power minus epsilon omega n t sine root over 1 minus epsilon square multiply omega n t plus phi 1. And there is two figures. First one is for a steady state solution. And the next one is for transient solution. You have to see the differences between them on the figure. Next topic, rotating unbalance. All machine parts and engines have rotary parts. Leads to forced vibration, self-excited vibration. And in the figure, you can see here the static equilibrium position. Look at the free body diagram. Here you can see the m k x c x dot is equal to something like m minus m x double dot or m a whatever. So this is a free body diagram. You can write from this acceleration of the unbalanced mass a is equal to d square divided by dt square multiply x plus e sine omega t by force balance plus m omega e square e sine omega t minus cx dot minus kx is equal to mx double dot or mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot is equal to m omega e square e sine omega t actually we can write f naught in the place of m omega square so we can write mx divided by me is equal to beta square divided by root over 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square and 10 phi is equal to 2 epsilon beta divided by 1 minus beta square look at the figure there are two figures this one is a free body diagram and this one is the graph line there is a problem for you a pump weight is 15 kg and has a resonance amplitude of 20 centimeter find epsilon given me 0 0.1 kg centimeter also 
calculate x at beta is equal to 3 next topic support motion there are two figures in the first figures you can see here the equation y is equal to y sin omega t is equal to y e to the power i omega t and in the second figure you can see there are two force fs and ft where fs is equal to k multiply x minus y ft is equal to c multiply x dot minus y dot so the governing equation is mz double dot plus kz plus cz dot is equal to m omega square y sine omega t z is relative to x and y the transmission ratio is tr is equal to modulus x divided by y that means root over 1 plus 2 epsilon beta whole square divided by second bracket 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square next vibration measuring instrument there are mainly two types first one is seismometer and the second one is accelerometer there is a figure where you can see the pump and the dimensions x y the constant k as well as c so talk about seismometer seismic mass is relatively large have low natural frequency have high frequency ratio and the governing equation is mz double dot plus kz plus cz dot is equal to m omega square y sine omega t and there is a figure of seismometer where you can see the m is seismic mass and y is equal to y e to the power i omega t that has to be measured Governing equation is mz double dot plus kz plus cz dot is equal to m omega square y sine omega t and there is a curve you can see here. The solution is z divided by y is equal to beta square divided by root over 1 minus beta square whole square plus 2 epsilon beta whole square and 10 phi is equal to 2 epsilon beta divided by 1 minus beta square. For seismometer, beta is very large, so we can say z is equal to y and x is equal to 0. Now we have to find x, y and z from this curve. Next topic, velometer. Velometer working on Faraday's principle is a popular seismometer. Look at the figure. There are the seismic mass, which is magnet then there are coil and use for f is equal to 10 to 2000 hertz actually the relative motion is converted to electric voltage generated alpha rate of cutting magnetic field now talk about accelerometer every small seismic mass large natural frequency where fn is equal to 50 kilohertz that is huge number low frequency ratio and useful for f is equal to 0 to 3000 hertz look at the figure where accelerometer are seen as well as beta and modulus z divided by y as piezocrystal deforms voltage is generated which is the output acceleration and other properties are known and look at the figure there you can see the compressed as well as the bend and at the bottom there is the piezo crystal so you have to measure y so this is the ending of this video i hope you like this one thank you so much